So I feel like homeschooling is really on the job training. There is no school you could ever go to to learn all the things you need to know to homeschool your kids. So I, that, what that means is we make mistakes, we fall down, we fail, and then we have to learn from those mistakes. So I have been seeing a lot of those failures lately. And in this video, I'm sharing what those look like and also some of the lessons I've learned. This video is actually a collaboration with some other homeschool mamas so that you can also learn from their mistakes. So I'm going to just throw up the slide right now and you can see who is in this collab. So I'm Joy Cherick and I am hosting the collab with Christy from One Blessed Mess. And we got together with Sodbuster Living, Rooted in Rest, Living with Eve, Our Blessed Life, Pennies and Salt, Simply Living It, and Home Sweet Homeschool. And I will link to the playlist down below so that you can go check those gals out as well. So the first way that I've failed in my homeschool is with my attitude. Over the last three or four months, our family has been in crisis mode. My husband lost his job just before Christmas, and then I just was grieving, and it was so hard for me to, you know, put a happy face on. So I really, that's when I made the video about homeschooling during our bad days. And I think that was really crucial for me, but what I allowed to slip was my attitude. And I saw my attitude rubbing off on my kids. I was being sluggish. I was unmotivated. And guess what? That produced children who were being sluggish and unmotivated. So what I learned from that is that my attitude is contagious. And I have, I just had to figure out how to scale back and still move forward without just getting stuck. So we just, we were able to make progress. And now my husband does have a new job. There's light at the end of the tunnel. So we have been encouraged, but everyone goes through those slumps next place that I have failed in our homeschool is with my expectations of the quality of work that my children produce. I have really had the attitude for the last few years that, you know, just getting it done was a win. And we're talking about, you know, baby mode and pregnancy mode. And again, like just trying to survive. But now that I'm on the other side of those, I am like, guys, we need to raise the bar. You should expect more from yourself and take pride in the work that you do. So we've just been talking a lot about doing things well and like caring about the, the work that you do. So what I've noticed, and I took one full week to get started training this new expectation. And I'm going to tell you, it was not pretty. People were not happy with me about this. And I, I had within me this sense of, no, I know you can do better. And then what started to happen over the course of that first week was my kids would come up to me and say, what do you think of this mom? What do you think of my work? Isn't it so neat? Look at how I formed that letter. Oh, and my first grader, his A's were, he was having so much trouble with them. And I was, it was really more about me coaching them, not forcing some rule on them that, oh, now all of a sudden we have to be neat. But it was like, no, let's pay attention. Let's try to keep our letters even. Let's try to make sure that they don't go below the line or above the line. Let's just focus on those two things. And my first grader, his work went from being just haphazard to, oh my goodness, his 
his penmanship is probably the best of all my kids right now. It is so neat. And he is taking such pride in his work. And that is something that I want to cultivate in him and show them that yes, he can do it. Again, like I just wasn't expecting enough out of my kids. And I have one student, my third grader, who was just dawdling and just, you know, I thought, oh, well, it's hard for him or, oh, well, he's bored. And what I ended up doing, and this suggestion is actually found in Charlotte Mason's volume on home education. She has this whole section about the way of the will. And she talks about a set amount of time to do the work and let the child know how much time you have. So in our case, I set the timer for 30 minutes for my student to read his Bible and do his two pages of math. And if he gets done before that, he has free time. So he has been collecting, I mean, every single day, he would have anywhere from five to 15 minutes of free time. And he took so much pride in that. And if I saw he start, would start to doodle, I'd say, buddy, you're, you're working into your free time right now. And he'd go, oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'll finish this up. And the work was, it's, he's, he's really good at math. So, um, he just needed to get through it and, you know, be diligent to get the work done. But me not requiring more of him was allowing him to have a slothful attitude. And now he has so much pride in the work that he's doing. So what I've really learned is that we really don't want our students to learn more about themselves and be inward focused, but we want to teach them how to love the work that God has for them. And as students, the work that God has for them is getting an education, learning, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And what I learned is that it's really more about coaching them and giving them the tools that they need to be successful than it is commanding and demanding. Education is relational. It's, it's give and it's take. And if a child is frustrated, it's probably because they don't have the proper tools. So if you have a first grader, second grader, sometimes even a third grader who is really having a difficult time with the abstract concept of numbers, you can just give them a hundreds chart or you can give them an abacus. And then that empowers them to find the answer without counting on their fingers and having to memorize it. They need to be led to the tools to help them succeed. Another way I failed in our homeschool is remembering that my education matters too. And what I mean by that is uh, we started to do, a, we did a co-op last year and that incorporated some things like art and music. But what I found was that I then wasn't really getting to learn and experience those elements in our homeschool the way I was when it was at home. So what I'm going to do next year is make sure that I incorporate my own interests as I'm looking at everyone else's educational menu, if you will, and incorporate some of those into our morning time and into some of our family work activities. So this summer, we're actually doing a brush drawing class but we're all doing it together. That's something I'm really excited to learn myself. So I'm able to bring my kids into that. And I will actually leave a link below to the brush drawing class that we are taking right now as kind of a family adventure. Okay, and the last way that I have failed in our homeschool is by adding too many books and too much pressure while we're in a season with a very busy toddler. So what I found, and I'm going to, I'll link over to, I have another video about, um, what I do with babies and newborns in a homeschool day. But what we're doing right now is, and it's really working well, is reading at breakfast. We're doing our Bible reading and we're doing one really fun read aloud before we start school and do our chores. So this kind of anchors us, but it also allows 
the morning time part to be broken up into two sections so that we're not exhausting the baby <laughs> and making sure that she's, you know, not getting into terrible things while we're doing school. So what I've learned and my big takeaway from all of that, you know, I was just feeling behind because I had scheduled too much to do and it just didn't make sense for the season that we're in. So now I have pulled back on how many books we're reading. I had to prioritize and I had to like forgive myself for some of the ones we're simply not getting to. We're, we're um, reading at meal times and a snack time. And sometimes I wear her on my back when I'm reading or doing a morning time. And then we're also using her nap time to get some other of our work done. So what about you? What aha moments have you had? What lessons have you been learning as you are in the middle of the on the job training of homeschooling? I would love to hear in the comments below. That's all I've got for today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.